I hear you asking why. Removing one of the most significant color combinations in Rolex's catalog, it's not logical, like at all. But here's the psychology. Removing such a significant watch would help drive up the interest for it and its contemporaries even more. I know, I know, controversial, absolutely. The more I think about it, the more unbelievable it sounds. But then again, Rolex is not the kind of brand to, to take this sort of stuff lightly, and they do like to make a statement. So let's cover what may very well be the final cycle or the end of the modern Pepsi GMT. But never fear, because if a watch this significant has to go, that means that something else is going to take its place. And some of us in the background have been thinking a lot about it, and I th we have an idea of what it might be. So I would like to think that my argument for the discontinuation of the Pepsi GMT makes sense, looking at its timeline, looking how long its production has lasted, and considering what could come in to replace it. All of that and more coming up. The red and blue GMT, the Pepsi, the BLRO. It is without doubt one of the most important design statements by Rolex. It's not too much of a reach to say that it is one of the most iconic Swiss watches of all time, and importantly, it's a watch that epitomizes Rolex's modern gold standard. If we wind the clocks back, this colorway has been played around with from the very beginning, the golden years when their first GMT model launched in 1954, and it saw popularity from day one. Through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 2000s, it's remarkable how much of an impact this watch has made. It's made such a huge dent on the industry. Just how influential it has been as a sports watch. You know, often imitated, never matched. That's how the saying goes. But the story today circles around the ceramic variant and this modern lineage and where it began and how it developed. It was around 2005 when we first saw the use of a Cerachrome bezel insert and it debuted on a GMT. And from there, the floodgates opened. We started seeing Cerachrome used on the Submariner, the Daytona, the Yachtmaster 2. So the first ceramic bezel insert was introduced in 2005. But what's interesting about this timeline is that the Pepsi GMT still had an aluminium bezel until 2007, when it was finally discontinued. And with that, the blue and red bezel configuration was out of Rolex's catalog for, I believe, the first time since 1954. The years went by, the black ceramic bezel GMT was introduced with the green hand, but the real landmark moment for multicolored Cerachrome bezel inserts, try and say that three times, was the introduction of the BLNR, or the Batman, in 2013. It was here at this point that the anticipation about the return of the Pepsi bezel ceramic began to rise. And there again, it wasn't until 2014 that the Cerachrome Pepsi bezel was reintroduced into the catalog, seven whole years after the aluminium was first discontinued. It was a very special watch to think it was 10 years ago. And I remember the time when everyone was going mad for this piece and asking that question of when will we see this launched in steel? So maybe here is the best time than ever to talk about cycles. They produce a piece for a certain amount of time before it is phased out, partially updated and brought back. A good example to look at would be the Kermit to the Hulk to the Sermit Submariner. All of them are Submariners, all of them have green bezel inserts, but very different when looking at the finer details. I've always found these design evolutions fascinating. How typefaces change, how proportions have changed, how Rolex tends to take risks in a lot of places, bringing the sizes up, bringing them back down, tapering the lugs. With those examples out of the way, getting back on topic, the white gold BLRO received a few other updates in its lifetime. My favorite combination for this particular watch was a blue dial. As far as color pairings go, it is spectacular. And I really wish Rolex would play around more with dial colors instead of just giving us the typical black or white color options on most of their professional sports watches. I mean, look at that symmetry, predominantly blue matching with the blue bezel, but then that highlight, that accent color of red on the second hour hand and how that pairs with the bezel. And a bit later down the road, they also produced a meteorite dial of the white gold GMT. It was another fan favorite, referencing the very rare Albino dial 6542. But here's the thing, the next development of the saga is that we only saw the Pepsi bezel in steel in 2018 and it debuted on a Jubilee bracelet. And this community once again went mad for. I believe this also happened around the time when they trimmed portions off the case to make it feel all the more svelte and streamlined. And with all of that taken into consideration, looking at the modern lineup of the ceramic bezel GMT, we can safely say the undisputed king 
of the modern GMT configurations. And since 2018 until now, we've seen a few more bold and dynamic steps taken forward with the GMT range. We've now arrived at a time where Rolex has recently given us not only the return of a two-tone Jubilee configuration, but also a solid yellow gold Jubilee. Catching those 70s, those 80s, 1675 feelings, you know, the original gold variants. Not only that, but with a twist that we're still questioning and wondering why it was done, the Destro, or the left-hand drive VTNR, it's been nicknamed the Sprite, they threw that into the mix. And for the first time, we are seeing a green and black bezel insert on an extremely odd-looking GMT. So taking all of that into account, the current steel lineup is pretty solid. Blue and black, blue and red, green and black, gray and black. These are four strong contenders. But since we've seen the Pepsi bezel on a GMT since 2014, and this year is 2024, a decade of Cerachrom red and blue, it's not completely impossible to imagine that this colorway is going to be phased out for a few years. I hear you asking why. Removing one of the most significant color combinations in Rolex's catalog, it's not logical, like at all. This is the pinnacle watch, the pinnacle combination for many people who chase the brand today. And this is the only reservation I have about Rolex not deciding to discontinue it. The recognizability factor and the desirability is so strong. And even right now, it remains at its peak. It is still one of the most sought after sports watches in the world from any brand. We cast our minds back. We could say the same thing about the Hulk Submariner that was phased out a few years ago. It began as a not so popular model. It skyrocketed into popularity all the way through its life cycle. And it continues to remain very popular and sought after today, even on the secondary market. There is some method to Rolex's madness if they decide to remove what, the most significant GMT watch out of their catalog now at the height of its popularity. Why does it make sense? Well, we know that Rolex is not afraid of making grandiose gestures. It's part and parcel why they are Rolex and why they can afford to take risks like these. I think at the moment where the interest in watches is not as high as it was two or three years ago, could contribute a small percentage into the equation. You know, we pursue that which retreats from us. But here's the psychology. Removing such a significant watch would help drive up the interest for it and its contemporaries even more. Taking one of the most influential cornerstones out could help refocus the attention on pieces that maybe don't receive the same attention. Finally, and the one reason why I think it's most likely is that there is another watch out there that also has a nickname and it's lesser known in the collection, but it has what we know as the Coke bezel, the red and black, the R-O-N-R, -R, the Rouge Noir. And this piece, I've just thought about the pun now, it's ridiculous, talking about pilot watches, it would fly off the shelves. In summary then, why do I believe that the Pepsi bezel, the B-L-R-O, might be discontinued? The Cerachrome Pepsi bezel has been in production for 10 years. And how better to celebrate a 10 year anniversary than to remove it, in typical Rolex fashion. The removal of the Pepsi GMT would get people talking and anticipating what will come next. And with it gone, now not hogging everybody's attention like it usually does, a new piece can come in and take its place. And more importantly, have its own time in the spotlight. And considering we now have a blue-black bezel, the BLNR, the newly released green and black bezel, the VTNR, the only model missing to complete the trilogy is the red and black bezel, the RONR. And it just makes sense removing one model with a red accent to bring in a new model with red. Having the Pepsi bezel and the Coke bezel together, I think most people would still pursue the BLRO instead of the RONR. <laughs> These references, man. But after saying all of this, how many times have I, have we got it wrong? Does Rolex and their tactics ever truly make sense? Instead of the Pepsi being discontinued, could the VTNR go out of the window? As usual, I have probably left you here with more questions than answers, but I'd like to know your thoughts on the subject matter and if my argument makes any kind of sense why they would do it especially considering that the Coke bezel GMT would be a great reintroduction, a way to simmer down the hype for the Pepsi bezel, to refocus it somewhere else, and to reintroduce the blue and red again in the future. So now I'd like to know your thoughts on this convoluted, this controversial topic. And until then, my thanks as always for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.